Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here in Birmingham, the Magnificent Seven ride again. The first one was so good, that's do it again. Mr. No, Dev. Come on, Joe, it's the first time it was well, so good. nice. I was going to say but it. Not the first time so good, we had to do it again. Make it rhyme, Joe, come well, on. I was going to say that, genuinely, but then I thought, I'll leave that sort of thing to you. I, I don't do that. Sure, but, but we go again, uh, the Magnificent Seven ride again on Saturday night. Uh, the way it's, like Frank explained it pretty well, you know, obviously you'd expect so, he's the, the Hall of Fame promoter, but every fight just has a story, every fight's got something going on, and, th- and there's so much going on on Saturday, you really can't miss a fight. Think of Joe Joyce, right? Joe Joyce, a year ago, the juggernaut, he was rampaging through everyone. People were talking about him being the biggest threat to Tyson Fury, to Alexander Rusi. He ran into a big Chinese wall because Zhile Zhang he beat him twice and now he's got to come back he's got Cash Ali in front of him Cash Ali was game as you like at that press conference looking right down the camera looking right at Joe Joyce asking him what he had for Christmas dinner what a strange exchange that was but he's ready to go isn't he <laughs> um, I think probably minus the narrative side of it fight of the night for me anyway probably Liam Davis versus Robles. Robles after that absolute war against Lee McGregor. Liam Davis saying, look, I'm no Lee McGregor. That's surely going to bring fireworks. Good thing to say, wasn't it, from, uh, from Liam Davis? Look, Robles, he calls himself El Terrible. Now, the last El Terrible that I know from Mexico was Eric Morales, who was one hell of a fighter. My favourite fighter. One of my favourite fighters. If, um, if Robles is half as good as uh, Eric Morales, then uh, it could be a terrible night for, for Liam Davis. But Liam Davis, mate, just look at him. Look in his eyes. He's got that grit, that I'm from the gutter. I'm from nothing. I'm trying to change my life. And he's just taking hard fight after hard fight after hard fight. Who on earth decides to, do you know what, go and fight Mark Leach. He's, he's very, very slippery. It's a very, very tough fight. Let me go and fight Mark Leach. Let me go and beat Mark Leach. Let me go and fight Baluta. Let me beat Baluta. Robles, do you fancy it? Let's do it. Jason Cunningham before that? Yeah, come on then. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all your belts. He is uh, he's quite something, and he is he's someone that the country should be getting behind. Uh, they call him the Terror of Telford, the Don of Donington. Let's see if he can uh, put on a show in Birmingham on Saturday. Nathan Heaney, is this, I know, I feel like we said this last time, but is this the last step before the Stoke Stadium fight? I think so. Uh, it, it feels like it. It feels like you don't want to like tempt fate, but it's, it's obvious he's got a fight there at some point. Hopefully at some point very, very soon. The thing is, he keeps putting these hard fights in the way of it. Like, when he took the fight with Jack Flatley, I was like, ooh, that's a, you know, you want to fight at Stoke. That's a, quite a difficult fight to take. Then he took the fight with Denzel Bentley. He had to say, yes, British title on the line. But it was in Manchester. I thought, oh, that, you know, that might be it for the Stoke dream then if he goes and loses to, to Denzel Bentley. But he beat him. Uh, that kind of shows you anything's possible, really. He must feel like he can do anything. He must feel top of the world. But once again, a tough fight. Brad Pauls. If this fight had been made a year ago, before Denzel, before uh, the Denzel Bentley fight, Brad Pauls would probably be a favourite against Nathan Heaney, English champion. You know, he's a uh, he's mixed in good company. He has stopped people that Nathan Heaney hasn't stopped. I think it's a very hard fight. I think it's a fascinating fight. Nathan Heaney has all the momentum in the world right now. Two thousand Stokies will be with him, baying for blood. Uh, can't wait for, for the ring walk. Just can't wait for the fight. Certainly, and probably the most feisty up there was McCann, Brad Strand. I asked Frank himself what was said between the two of them, and he said, I can't repeat that on camera. So uh, is that, I don't know whether that was just a promoter in him talking or was there genuine like nastiness, shall we say? I would imagine it's a bit of both. Um, I, I would also imagine, I would hope that the Queensbury content team around here mic'd up yeah. Frank. So uh, maybe we will find out what was said. But there is a little bit of bit of something, isn't there? There's a, a good bit of needle between them. Brad Strand's a serious fighter, by the way. I know he, he's been sort of under the radar, but so was Nick Ball before he boxed Isaac Lowe. He was under the radar. Uh, and then he got his opportunity, and he hasn't looked back since. He's, he should be sat here now as the WBC World Featherweight Champion. So sometimes 
those fighters that go under the radar suddenly get an opportunity against a fighter with a, with a big name, a big scout, and they take it. Brad Strand is seeing himself as that guy on Saturday. Uh, Dennis McCann you know, just thinks he's on another level, thinks he can do what he wants against him. We'll find out, we'll find out. Mentally, how much of a boost will it be for certainly that stable for Nick Ball to go out and do what he did? I know he didn't get his hand raised on the night, but general consensus he should be the WBC champion right now. So confidence in that gym, in that stable, must be an all-time high and probably the worst time for Dennis McCann. Yeah, it's that. And it's also Dennis has changed camps. So look, that could be a good thing or, or a bad thing. We find out on Saturday, but... He's, he's kind of up sticks and he's moved to Liverpool. He's around Joe McNally, you know, Pierce O'Leary's up there as well. But Brad Strand's been very consistent in where, where, he, where he's grown up. He's been in that Everton Red Triangle gym, which has momentum, which has great, great fighters. Nick Ball, Andrew Kane, the McGrails. There's great fighters in that gym and uh, it will give the gym even more of a boost if they are able to pull it off because Dennis McCann is a, a fantastic fighter and a fantastic scalp as well for Brad Strand if he pulls it off. Just moving away from this card, but kind of still on the same lines for Joe Joyce, a fight that I mentioned, both Frank and his manager, Adam, today, was if he comes through Cash Alley, a potential Dillian White clash. If Dillian comes through Christian Hammer, does that interest you? I know that was t- spoken about before. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Dylan White is, uh, yeah, he's, he's back this Saturday, the Sunday. It's a Sunday night, so yeah. Look, he's a he's a character in the division. He's a name in the division. He's a guy that uh, I like. I find very very funny, and uh, it just feels like a good fight, doesn't it? I think there's, there's there's so many good fights out there for Joe Joyce. He just needs to get past Cash Ali because if he does, if he does a number on him, that's him sending out a message saying, look, the only guy that beat me was a guy who was bigger than me, was Southpaw. And uh, I couldn't, couldn't really contain him. That's the only guy that's beaten me. And he can look around and say, none of you guys are like him. Only Gilles Zhang's beaten him. If he can do a number on Cash Ali, then he can sit right back up at that top table and take on all comers. He's the only guy who's got a knockout win over Joe Parker, which looks better and better and better every time Joe Parker fights. So uh, Dillian White, Joe Parker, Daniel Dubois, they're all kind of like a, it feels like a Cash Ali win away. Just on Saudi last week, whilst you was there, there was some quite bizarre fights being made, left, right and centre. Not always bizarre, but just very left field, shall we say. I just want to get your reactions to a couple of them. Start off with one set in stone. Probably know what I'm going to say. Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. Um, Yeah, you've worked with Jake Paul in the past for the Tommy Fury fight. Was you expecting that? Uh, no, uh, I wasn't expecting that, but I, I like Jake Paul, I like Nikisa, and I, I, I feel like, you know, the, the fight is the fight, people will say whatever they're going to say about that. The real headline from that is the whole Netflix angle, that element, so great job Jake Paul, great job Nikisa, getting Netflix on board for some live boxing. I think they've got, you know, they've got hundreds of millions of subscribers worldwide, for me that is the, uh, that is the story, because if they can make a success of that... And Netflix are interested in boxing. That's another big player in boxing. So uh, congrats to them. Hopefully they can they can make it all work. And uh, yeah, the, the, the fight is is what it is. Yeah, I think uh, Netflix have just got the rights for WWE of next year. So they're clearly interested in the live sport, and that could be absolutely massive as a broadcaster for the, the future. Really, it could be. And on the Jake Paul front. He's a, he's a bit of a pioneer, isn't he? He seems to be kind of pushing boundaries, breaking new ground. Look, I don't think Misfits Boxing would have really existed if it wasn't for Jake Paul and everything that he's done. If it wasn't for Jake Paul, um, Tommy Fury would probably, you know, he'd be boxing at, right now, maybe English, British level, you know, around that kind of thing. But Jake Paul's changed his life with the, the big rivalry and... I know, he's a, he's a real groundbreaking kind of guy. And this Netflix thing is a, it's a big deal. Manny Pacquiao, Conor Ben. Was you expecting that face-off? I wasn't expecting the face-off. Uh, Did you know it was happening? I knew it was happening when they were on the stage facing <laughs> off. Um, but I uh, let them crack on. Let them crack on. Uh, Crawford versus Eubank Jr. They were all coming last week, weren't they? Yeah. That was that was quite something, wasn't it? Um, 
So Crawford has talked about going up to fight Canelo, right? Which will be at 168. Eubank fights at 160. I, th- I think I think it's a very interesting fight. If I'm honest, I think it's quite interesting. Like, because Crawford could just do a number on him. Crawford's really, really good. Um, fascinating fight. I, I really come out of left field. I yeah. don't really know what to say. Like, there's no like. Wouldn't be any titles on the on the line or, or anything like that. It's just a. I guess Crawford. It feels like maybe he's building his way up to to Canelo. Maybe Canelo's just not taking him seriously at the moment. I think he's talked about that. He's downplayed a fight with with Crawford. So maybe this is the road to Crawford establishing credibility at higher weights. It would be a very very credible win against Chris Eubank Jr. So uh, I guess that's his route for Eubank Jr. You get a great great fight against a great name against one of the best boxers in the world in, in Crawford it's not a great look if he loses though it's a it's a much smaller guy so fascinating have you seen this I'll be honest quite ludicrous video floating about online of um, Ngannou and Joshua suggesting that Joshua's knockout was fake I haven't seen I'm, I'm going to show you right now I'm going to show you this is ridiculous. it is absolutely ridiculous but uh, yeah I mean, he had he literally needed oxygen. I mean, what what more do you? This is bizarre. Go on. What, what? Right. So that's the first knockdown. That's it. Right. Okay. What about the second and third knockdowns? I mean, look, it, it was it was absolutely not not a uh, a fake fight. Um, it was a crisp calculated and cold performance from Anthony Joshua it was that walk away knockout it was a it was just a bad bad man and a, a bad night for Francis Ngannou Joshua basically said to Ngannou this isn't what you think it is you think you can switch southpaw in front of me this is what happens bang nothing fake about that but why are people still kind of hating because yeah, people people just hate and <laughs> people are I mean that is mad. Trying to figure out like who's put that. Why would why would you try to? I don't know, Joe. What do you think? Well, I think yesterday uh, we, I've, a few people have sent me that now. But my granddad sent me that saying uh, like, "Oh look, it's fake," and I've just sent back laughing emojis. Okay. But yeah. here's what I'd say: Go and ask Francis and Garnu if it was yeah. fake. Go and ask him. Oh, oh, well, yeah. if I can get hold of him. <laughs> yeah. uh, um, last one. I don't, you probably haven't seen this, but Ring Magazine have just released their updated heavyweight uh, rankings since the, the knockout chaos. Who would be your top five heavyweights right now? It's tough, because I, I was talking to uh, Andy Clark about this immediately afterwards. We, we were doing the stream. <clears throat> I think right now you, you've got to have Fury as number one, and you've got to have Usyk as number two. I understand that people could interchange them, but that's where I've got it. And then it all starts becoming a bit complicated. It, it really does. Anthony Joshua is in great, great form. Uh, and he's doing great jobs on, guy that, uh, on guys that Tyson Fury hasn't necessarily done great jobs over. So it's either him or Joe Parker. Because Joe Parker has back-to-back wins over Deontay Wilder and Jile Zhang. These are huge, huge, huge wins. But then Anthony Joshua has beaten Joe Parker. So do you put him above? It's tough. I, I would. I feel like it's Fury, Usyk, probably just Joshua because he's got a win over Joe Parker. And then Joe Parker, and then it's the real, like... Yeah, I prob- think everyone's saying then top four, but then the yeah. fifth one. It's probably Zhang because he, he did give Joe Parker hell in that fight. He does believe he won that fight. It was a close fight. No, no one knew conclusively who, whose hand was going to be raised at, at the 12th and final bell. So uh, you'd probably have Zhang there as number five. I think Wilder's completely out of those rankings until he fights if and when he fights again. Yeah, I, th- I think, I think uh, it's very interesting because like, heading into his fight with Joe Parker, a lot of people thought he was just going to knock Parker out, right? Joe Parker's been knocked out before, but he kind of went from Deontay Wilder to Deontay Milder, right? He couldn't he couldn't quite pull the trigger and before he knew it the fight the fight was over and he hadn't really done an awful lot. So 
he's got a lot of questions to answer in his next fight. Uh, and we'll find out. Uh, as always, it's the next fight which, which tells you everything. But right now, you have to kind of drop him out of that mix because of the level of performance in his last fight. Very last one, then. If you're saying third and fourth is Parker Joshua, if they were to fight next, who do you think would get their hand raised? Oh, I'm not going to say. And, and actually, I don't know. Even if I like, did like, have a strong pick, uh, I don't know. Is there strong arguments for both, though, can you see? Yeah. Absolutely. Look, Anthony Joshua has... Yeah, this might be the best Anthony Joshua ever. His confidence is sky high. He's letting his punches go. He's hitting very, very, very hard. And he's, he's got a great camp around him. Joe Parker, the form line is tremendous. Um, as, as I said, wins over Wilder, wins over Zhang. It's a great place to be. And he's gelled very well with Andy Lee. they got something special going on. Um, I don't know who'd win. What do you think? Come on. I asked the questions. I asked one back. Well, <laughs> you, you only get to ask me if uh, I'm on some kind of stream or something, which I would always decline anyway. Okay. But, uh, yeah, Dev, thank you very much for speaking to IFL TV. Um, I understand you'll be going back to Coventry tonight, so uh, any Dev Sarni <laughs> fans, uh, yeah, be looking around the Coventry area. I've been sent to Coventry, so, uh, yeah, that, that's where I am. But... Yeah, just watch the show on Saturday. We're live on the Queensbury YouTube channel beforehand. Um, I've got Echo Esselman with me. We're going to be watching Ezra Taylor in a Commonwealth Silver Light Heavyweight title fight. And then uh, live on TNT Sports from Half Six. It's a really good show. Just watch it. You know what we saw the return of today? Devon Heaney. Dev and Heaney. It's so good, isn't it? Such a lovely moment. What, what a lovely man Nathan Heaney is. 2,000 tickets, 450 deliveries. He's a, he's a bad man. He's a mad man, and the fans, I'm sure, will be going mad on Saturday night. Thank you very much, Dev, and I'll see you tomorrow, if not Saturday. Okay, hopefully, you, both. hopefully both. Hopefully both. Thank you, mate. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. <laughs> <laughs>